phase. Good morning and welcome to virtual B Birmingham Unitarian Church, which I keep calling churchual, but nobody seems to like. I am the Reverend Mandy Beal. I am this congregation's senior minister. I'm joined today by our co-directors of music ministry, Abha and Stephen Deering. Our services will be hosted on Zoom and then posted on Facebook every Sunday morning at 10.30 uh, for the foreseeable future. Birmingham Unitarian Church is a welcoming congregation as a designation that a UU church can earn by demonstrating a commitment to learning about and doing the work to support lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer individuals and their families. We are also a green sanctuary, which is a similar designation for environmental justice causes. And although there is no such designation for racial justice, we are deeply committed to that work as well. As we continue learning how to use Zoom for our worship services, a reminder of some requests. First, as a service to your fellow participants, we ask that you don't type any comments during the service. Second, we recommend that all participants use the speaker view and that will automatically make the worship leader the largest screen. Uh, next, because of that, you'll want to remain on mute the entire time, including the hymns. And we also have a note from Stephen and Abha this week. If you're concerned about sound quality, they recommend that you join the Zoom service using your smartphone. Virtual coffee hour will take place after the service again today. You will be randomly sorted into breakout groups, and we hope that you will participate in this opportunity to connect with others. If you're worshiping with us for the first time today, we extend a special welcome to you. Please do stay after and get to know people in those breakout groups. We have several announcements this week. First, there are several online community building opportunities coming up. Tomorrow morning at 10, please join me for coffee with the minister. Stop by with the beverage of your choice and check in about how things are going for you in coronavirus land. Also tomorrow night at 7 p.m., you are invited to join a discussion about the Energy Innovation Act and the role that, the role that BUC can play in supporting that legislation. Also on Thursday at seven, Matt Chope, who is a partner at the Center for Financial Planning, will lead a discussion about the financial markets and the state of the economy. Links for those discussions can be found in emails from us. Our second announcement today is an acknowledgement that today was supposed to be Daffodil Sunday. This is an important celebration of our congregation's decades long commitment to being supportive of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer people um, my hope is that we'll be able to celebrate Daffodil Sunday later this year. I am wearing a green shirt and offer in um, honor of Daffodil Sunday. Our next announcement is a reminder that our stewardship pledge drive is coming to a close. Please submit your pledge or your pledge, pledge form on our website by Wednesday, April the 1st to support next year's budget. And finally, a quick mention of our folks that don't use the internet. Please give them a call, make sure that they're okay. Also help us reach out by adding them to our phone call list, which you can find by visiting our website. Thank you again for joining us this morning or whenever you're watching this. Although we are not physically together, we are together in spirit and it is good to be together again. And with that, our morning service will now begin. This morning's prelude is a mazurka called Sueño by Spanish romantic composer Francisco Tarrega. The title Dream expresses Tarrega's resilience as he overcame many hardships to be a prolific composer. Here's Stephen Deering on classical guitar.
We worship this morning from our separate homes, but we join with a multitude of Unitarian Universalists in lighting our chalice. Spirit of love and life, move through and among us. Guide our hearts to each other in this sacred moment. Flow into our world and bring the peace that passes all understanding and the compassion that knows no end. We'll join together now in our first hymn. So there should be a slide coming up for voice still and small. And together we'll sing through the slide twice. Voice still and small, deep inside all, I hear you call, singing, in storm and rain, sorrow and pain, still we'll remain, singing, calming Our opening words this morning come from Maureen Killeran. We are called today. In the midst of pain and challenge, we are called to praise the world. From a world that appears to be broken, we are called to praise life's moments of joy and grace. From time that seems to freeze and ongoing exchanges of platitudes and blame, we are called to reach out to those around us, to connect with those we care about, to try to make amends with those from whom we are estranged. The world is too fragile. There is too much pain. Let us bring our hearts together on this day. Let us praise the mutilated world and all its blessing and its pain. Amen. The time has come in our service when we ask for your financial support. Our beloved community relies on the support of our members and friends to provide worship services, religious education, our music program, and so much more. And all of that continues in our new online format. We all know that the coronavirus pandemic has impacted personal finances and the economy. Our church is also deeply impacted by the recent events and we need your support now more than ever. New this week, BUC has a Venmo account to collect your offering. 
If you have a Venmo account, our username is at BUCMI. You'll see Joanne Copeland's name there, but it is in fact linked to BUC's bank account. Also, there is a link in the chat bar that will take you to our website where you can click the Donate Now button. If you need to set up accounts through either of those giving platforms, I urge you to do so when the service is over. You can also put a check in the mail. We can't do what we do without your contributions. And I invite you to please give generously. Today's offertory is Times Like These, written and originally performed by the Foo Fighters. And as Reverend Mandy said, please, times like these are unprecedented. Give generously if you can. I am a one-way motorway. I'm the one that drives away and follows you back home. I am a street light shining. I'm a wild light blinding bright, burning off low. It's times like these you learn to live again. It's times like these you learn to love again. It's times like these you give and give again. It's times like these, time and time again. I am a new day rising. I'm a brand new sky to hang the stars upon tonight. I am a little divided. Do I stay or run away? Leave it all behind. Oh, it's times like these you learn to live again. It's times like these you give and give again. It's times like these you learn to love again. It's times like these time and time again. It's times like these you learn to live again. It's times like these you give and give again. It's times like these you learn to love again. It's times like these time and time again. We set aside time each week for prayer and reflection, for centering, speak what is on our hearts. We begin with the sharing of joys and sorrows, which can be submitted online using the link provided in the BUC shout out. Remember that if you submit a joy or sorrow through that portal, it will be shared here in the space, which is available to the public. We start off with a note of sorrow from the Brainerd Jinx family. Their dear snowshoe cat, Lily, passed away at home in Laura's arms on the 26th at the age of 18. They are grateful for the joys that she brought to them. And in the midst of the challenges that we are all facing, we have several joys submitted this morning as well. Someone has left a note of gratitude for the ease in donating to our weekly plate collection. We also have a joy for the nonviolent communication group Zoom that met last Saturday, where the submitter felt support and a relief from loneliness. Colleen Cavanaugh is thankful that her residents at Devonshire Retirement Village remain healthy and that their families are so cooperative and supportive during this difficult time. From Larry Friedman, Larry has a joy that thousands of opera fans worldwide are appreciating the Metropolitan Opera's wonderful gift of free nightly screenings of operas from its collections from the last 14 years. 
He says that we are enjoying emotionally tragic, romantic, and comical dramas with support, superb staging and among the best in vocal and orchestral music. And lastly, we have a joy from Natalie Price. Her mom is on the mend from COVID. She says, I was so worried because of her age and pre-existing conditions, and now I'm so grateful that she is getting better. I know that not everyone will be so lucky, lucky but it gives me hope that even vulnerable people are able to survive this. And we know that there are many joys and sorrows on our hearts that were not shared. I invite you now to move me further into a spirit of prayer meditation. This morning finds us in the midst of so much turmoil. And it can be hard sometimes to see the greater good that is still happening around us. Today we think of the power of daffodils. Daffodils are a symbol of hope and something that this congregation has chosen to uplift and highlight, something that we hold as part of our very nature. Daffodils begin as bulbs and they wait underground until the time is right and then they blossom. We right now are in a time of being underground, a time of introspection, a time of getting down to our bare essentials. May we in turn blossom into the world. When the time is right, let us shine forth and come out of this experience bright and beautiful and brilliant. May it be so, amen and blessed be. When I breathe in Our reading this morning is titled History Will Remember, written by Donna Ashworth. History will remember when the world stopped and the flights stayed on the ground and the cars parked in the street and the trains didn't run. History will remember when the schools closed and the children stayed indoors and the medical staff walked towards the fire. They didn't run. History will remember when the people sang on the balconies in isolation, but so very much together in courage and song. History will remember when the people fought for their old and their weak, protected the vulnerable by doing nothing at all. History will remember when the virus left and the houses opened and the people came out and hugged and kissed and started again kinder than before. Well, friends, here we are, another week in coronavirus land a week that has brought us more difficult and scary news, news that we all know and we need to acknowledge. The CDC reported 103,321 known cases of COVID-19 as of 4 p.m. yesterday. 
This morning, the New York Times reported 2,000 deaths in our country. As of 3 p.m. yesterday, Michigan.gov reported 3,657 confirmed cases in Michigan and 92 deaths. We all feel the heaviness of these numbers and a sense of dread about how quickly this disease is spreading. Additionally, it appears that Donald Trump has entered into a petty dispute with Governor Gretchen Whitmer. She feels this dispute has impacted the state's ability to procure essential medical equipment, life-saving equipment. And then on Friday, many of us read the draft letter that was leaked from Henry Ford Medical System outlining how services might be triaged in the months to come, how they will decide who gets care and who doesn't. Our social situation has many of us in a precarious emotional state as it is, and these events might feel like a serious blow to morale. It might ratchet up anxiety, add fuel to the fire of our anger. It would be easy to be lost to these or any number of other feelings. But these are not the only stories of the week. In the midst of the pettiness of our current administration and against the backdrop of the commodification of healthcare and late stage capitalism, there are stories of human compassion, generosity, and solidarity. Bethany Frankel, who is known for her role on The Real Housewives of New York and her Skinny Girl brand, has leveraged the considerable resources of herself and other very wealthy celebrities to provide protective gear to medical providers, around $50 million. Her relief organization has also delivered personal care products and financial aid to families that rely on subsidized school lunches. This is an example of a high profile person taking concrete actions to ease the suffering of others. And this week, I learned that several fashion designers have stopped production of their clothing line in order to make protective gear. That includes Christian Seriano and Brittany Allen of Project Runway fame. Also, Los Angeles Apparel donated the use of one of their factories for this purpose. It is truly amazing to see people in the private sector turn their attention to generosity over profit. And regular folks are engaging in radical acts of hospitality as well. I have seen people reading children's books, playing music, giving art lessons, offering free lectures, demonstrating how to cook a favorite recipe, and most recently, as some of us are really starting to struggle, how to cut your own hair. All of that work done for the good of others with no compensation or expectation of reciprocity. And if you told me a couple of months ago that all of that along with access to some of the country's greatest cultural institutions would be freely and readily available online, I would not have believed it. Coronavirus land is emotionally draining, economically unstable and lonely for many of us. But it's also full of this generosity, this creativity, and care in a way that I think that we all of us considered was something of the past. As challenging as a moment like this is, there is so much good here too. We cannot be mired in the swamps of sadness when all around us, American culture and community are blossoming. Now we, Americans, we have a history with this. We have a tendency 
to surmount unbeatable odds by finding our way back to each other. There are several examples that I could point to, but on a national level, the, the example that stands out most clearly for me is the Second World War. Now, I was not there, obviously, but perhaps some of you were. My knowledge of what was happening in the life of the average American during that time comes to me from my grandmother. One of the things that she's talked about the most from that time is the way that the women of her small town bonded. The U.S. was still coming out of the Great Depression and supplies were short. There was a push for people on the home front to send supplies to their loved ones in the service. My grandmother and the other women in her neighborhood gathered regularly to can produce from their gardens, coffee, and tobacco for their husbands who were off at war. These women came together to learn about canning, to share equipment and supplies and let their young children play together, but more importantly, they needed each other. They were all young, like really young, like in their early 20s, and they needed the sustenance of community as much as their husbands needed the sustenance that they were canning. Although the canning was important, it was never really about the canning. My grandmother is 97 years old. Some of the women from that canning group are still alive. Most of them are not. Some are still friends. Some were always frenemies. But the bonds they forged in those bleak and desperate times were never broken. I think once you've been through the experience of holding each other together and reflecting each other's humanity, there is no going back to whatever your relationship was before. You belong to each other in a different way forever. And it's a funny thing that we have to be forced into this experience. Maybe it's the overdevelopment of individualism that has plagued our country from the beginning. Maybe it's the competition that is inherent in capitalism. Maybe it's like this everywhere and I just assume that it's an American problem. Whatever the reason, it seems to take a disaster to bring out the best in us. We always rise to the occasion. When an obstacle befalls us, we overcome it. And we do that together. We have never, as a country, responded to a tragedy by saying, oh, well, every person for themselves. No. We band together and we find our way. Think for a minute about all of the good that you've seen this week. Where have you noticed someone going above and beyond? What act of kindness did you read about or observe? What attempt to break the monotony and loneliness do you remember? We are tapping into that deep well of care and concern for each other that has always carried us through and will carry us through again. We are finding the true promise of our country, the grit and dignity and decency that has been with us from our founding and carried us through tough times, no matter how far away from it we may have strayed. In times like these, we learn to love each other fiercely and hold on to that which is true, right, and good. We put our shoulders together and we lean into the onslaught. We figure it out with or without the resources and the leadership that we need. We have done it before. We will do it again. We are doing it now, in this very moment. May we continue in that struggle. May we continue our way towards each other. 
may it be so. Amen and blessed be. We'll join together now in one more hymn. For our closing hymn today, the words are pretty easy. There's more love somewhere. I'm gonna keep on till I find it. There's more love. And then we'll go to hope, peace, and of course, joy. So sing out full and strong so your neighbors get a little bit excited about hearing you. Harmonize with me and let's lift up our voices with love, hope, peace, and joy together. There is more love somewhere. There is more love somewhere. I'm gonna keep on till I find it. There is more love somewhere. Hope, there is more hope somewhere. There is more hope somewhere. I'm gonna keep on till I find it. There is more hope somewhere. There's more peace. There is more peace somewhere. There is more peace somewhere. I'm gonna keep on till I find it. There is more peace somewhere. There's more joy. There is more joy somewhere. There is more joy somewhere. I'm gonna keep on till I find it. There is more joy somewhere. As our service ends, go now out into the world in a way that is safe. Remember some of the joy, and the hope that you have found here. Hold it deep in your heart. Stay well in the week to come. Take good care of each other. And keep finding ways to bring out the best in one another. May it be so. Amen and blessed be. <laughs>